uh, our time and we are handing over now to Dr. Kisses, coming all the way from Kenya. Friends, this group has grown up past borders, past barriers, and we are asking that the Lord works through Dr. Kisses this morning and speaks to us about prayer. Dr. Kisses, we are asking that you unmute and you minister to you, God's people. Good morning, good morning. I want to thank God that I can be here with you to share the word of God at this moment. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you may bless your word. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that at this hour, your presence will not only be felt in our lives, but we will continue a journey with you into eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The thought I would like to share with you, ladies and gentlemen, is titled, Before Going Public, Stay in the Wilderness. Before Going Public, Stay in the Wilderness. Before Going Public, Stay in the Wilderness. This is a thought that I developed in my blog, which some of you are familiar with, uh, in raycases.com. And I think it is something we need to think about as people who believe in God and as people who believe in prayer. Luke chapter 1, verse 80, 80. Luke chapter 1, verse 80. The Bible says that, and the child grew and became strong in spirit. And he lived in the wilderness until he appeared publicly to Israel. The Bible is telling us about John the Baptist, how he grew. And the Bible tells us that John the Baptist did not just appear in public. He stayed in the wilderness for some time until when it was necessary for him to appear in public. The message I would like to share with you today is before you go public, stay in the wilderness. You see, ladies and gentlemen, John the Baptist was brought up in Judea. Because his parents were old, they must have died early when he was still young. Remember when Zechariah and Elizabeth were told about the birth of John, they were told at a time when they were already very old. So these parents must have died when this gentleman was still very young. He was a Nazarite, and so he was supposed to keep off from many negative influences, including the influence of the city. And so he stayed in the deserts and bush country of Judea. And his ministry, like that of Jesus, began at age 30, but in a strange and powerful way. He dressed differently. He ate differently. But the Bible observes in our text today in Luke chapter 1 verse 80 that John totally kept off from the public. He stayed in the wilderness until when God clearly signaled that he needed him to preach in public. And that's why the message today to you and me is that before going public, please stay in the wilderness. You see, prior to his wilderness life, John must have been brought up at home like any other child. John must have attended the synagogue schools where he learned to read and write because in his preaching, he cites uh, texts in the Old Testament. So he must have known how to read and write. Only that we need to understand that in the Bible times, when they say somebody is educated or schooled, it was not just about ability to read and write, but that they belonged to rabbinical schools, like, like Gamaliel was a teacher to Apostle Paul, and so Apostle Paul would be considered educated because he was in the rabbinical school, the Hillel rabbinical school, but just knowing how to read and write was not sufficient. So John the Baptist knew how to read and write, just like Jesus Christ. He must have attended the rabbinical schools. When he moved to the wilderness, John read scripture and prayed and meditated on what he was reading from scripture. 
And so when he left the wilderness to come to the public, he already knew scripture that he was reading in the wilderness. He had already interacted with God through prayer that he did in the wilderness. Ladies and gentlemen, before going public, and we want to thank God that it is still early morning, we have not left our houses, we have not gone public out there to interact with the world today. Before going public, ladies and gentlemen, it is important that you stay in the wilderness of your house, interact with scripture and pray to God so that when you go public, you are impact is felt and experienced before going public, stay in the wilderness. And so John the Baptist stayed in the wilderness where he read scripture, where he prayed, where, where, where he interacted with God and his faith became strong in the wilderness. When he went public, things were never the same. And that's why we are told that he stayed in the wilderness until the time when he appeared public. Stay in your wilderness, my brother. Stay in your wilderness, my sister, until when God opens the doors for you to go public. And when the sun rises, God will have opened the door for us to go public. It will be sad to go to the public if we have not stayed in the wilderness. You see, the significance of the wilderness is that it was away from the influence of that which was public and in the city. The wilderness signifies seclusion. The wilderness is the secret laboratory where the best tools are carved and sharpened. And so before you go public, you need to sharpen your tools. You need to carve your best to make sure that nothing go wrong, goes wrong. The wilderness doesn't mean that the person God sends is clueless about what happens in society. You know, sometimes we can seclude ourselves from society to the extent that we become irrelevant because we don't know what's happening. But John the Baptist, though in seclusion, knew everything that was happening in the society. When you read about, uh, he, when you read Matthew chapter one, verse seven to nine, he knew of the illicit marriage of Herod and he condemned it and it's what caused his death. When you read Mark chapter 6, verse 18 to 19, and Luke chapter 3, verse 19 and 20, John knew about the theft of the tax collectors. When you read Luke chapter 3, verse 12 to 13, he knew how corrupt the soldiers were. When you read Luke chapter 3, verse 14, so you discover that John the Baptist knew what was happening in society. When we seclude ourselves and get close to God, it doesn't mean that we become ignorant of what is happening in society. It only means that we get closer to God. While we understand what's happening in society, we are close to God. He was a man of the wilderness, but not a stranger to the going ones in public society. Therefore, his preaching made sense since he belonged to both worlds. We should avoid extremism that is too public or is too much in the wilderness. He belonged to both worlds. John was a balanced man of God. He came to us from the wilderness, but he understood the society. Before going public, stay in the wilderness. You see, John was not the only one who stayed in the wilderness. Moses stayed in the wilderness in Midian for 40 years. Remember, 40 years after when he was born, he stayed in Pharaoh's palace. But after that, he went to Midian 40 years in the wilderness taking care of sheep. And when he left there, he became one of the greatest rulers before going public, stay in the wilderness. What about Apostle Paul? In Galatians chapter 1, verse 17 to 18, he says that, after God called him, he did not rush to Jerusalem, but he went to the desert of Arabia for three years before going public in his ministry. I just came to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that before going public, stay in the wilderness. Moses stayed in the wilderness. Apostle Paul stayed in the wilderness. Don't rush to Jerusalem after conversion. Stay in the wilderness. And what was Paul doing in the wilderness? Studying scripture, understanding the will of God. What was Moses doing in the wilderness? It was in that wilderness that we believe that he started writing the story of Genesis. God revealed to him what happened at the beginning of all beginnings, stay in the wilderness. Before Jesus began his ministry, Matthew chapter four, verse one, 
The Bible tells us the spirit led him to the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights before going public, ladies and gentlemen. We need to stay in the wilderness. Wilderness is where we make our personal calling and salvation sure. In the wilderness, we learn God's word. In the wilderness, we pray. Without wilderness experience, we cannot be God's servants. Disciples stayed with Jesus for three years before they went out into the world to preach, before going public. Stay in the wilderness. We all need the wilderness to catapult our service to God before going public. Stay in the wilderness. Some experiences that we go through, ladies and gentlemen, are the wildernesses. Some pain we go through is the wilderness. Some losses we experience are the wilderness. But ladies and gentlemen, there is a beauty in being in the wilderness. The Bible says that the spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. And I have a prayer today, my brothers and sisters, that the spirit will lead me, that the spirit will lead you to the wilderness, that from that experience in the wilderness, we will come out stronger, powerful, and ready to serve our God. May the Spirit lead you into the wilderness that will make you better. Scientists stay in the wilderness of their laboratory for many years, and when they come out, they have a solution to our problems. May the Spirit lead you into the wilderness. May the Spirit lead me into the wilderness. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you today as we leave our wilderness in to go into the world. We pray that may this be the wilderness that the Spirit brought us into. Lead us into the wilderness. Lead me into the wilderness. And may we be better after this experience. In Jesus' name, amen.